Hello, everyone. I am in uh, Larnaca at the Church of uh, St. Lazarus uh, Cathedral. And uh, today and every year on uh, July the 8th, uh, Russia celebrates the day of St. Peter and St. Fevronia, the Orthodox saint patrons of uh, marriage and love between the spouses. And um, here they are depicted uh, in an icon as saints. Uh, from the 16th century, this day was celebrated by the Orthodox Church and uh, Recently, in 2008, uh, it became a secular celebration known as the Day of Family, Love and uh, Fidelity. And uh, it was established as an alternative to St. Valentine's uh, Day, which is uh, a Western uh, tradition. And the promoters of this uh, today's celebration that suggest that uh, the Day of Family, Love and Fidelity reflects much better the traditional Russian ideal of Love And uh, I suggest to take a closer look at the story of uh, Peter and Feronia and try to figure out. So uh, who were Peter and uh, Feronia of Murom? Um, first of all, I want to show you on the map where the town of Murom is, uh, on the map of Russia. And uh, as you see, it's quite close to Moscow, a bit to the east of uh, Moscow. So uh, Peter and Fevronia were real historical characters. They were the real people who lived in the 13th uh, century in the Principality of Murom. And uh, in 1547, they were canonized as saints. Uh, the oral legends about their life uh, were written down later and uh, turned into a hagiographical piece uh, only in the 16th uh, century after their uh, canonization. And... Um, this tale was written uh, by the author named uh, Hermolaus Erasmus, who was an Orthodox priest in times of the Tsar Ivan IV, uh, also known as Ivan uh, the Terrible. So uh, this 16th uh, century tale of uh, Peter and uh, Fevronia, it tells us the following. I will uh, narrate you uh, the plot. So Peter had a brother whose name was Paul and who reigned in uh, Murom as prince in the beginning of the 13th uh, century. Uh, Paul was disturbed by an evil snake, that is, by the devil, that uh, has gotten into the habit of visiting his wife, uh, disguising itself as the prince himself. And uh, his wife found out that uh, the only one who could destroy the snake using the magic sword was Paul's brother, Peter. And Peter killed the snake, but uh, the blood of the snake spilled over him, and his body became covered with painful scabs and, and wounds. And uh, no doctors were able to help, uh, but then Peter heard of uh, Fevronia, a wise young uh, peasant maiden, who was said to be able to heal him. And uh, Fevronia was uh, beautiful, pious, and good, but uh, first of all, she was wise. Uh, she knew the properties of herbs and could cure uh, ailments. And uh, Fevronia promised uh, the prince that she could indeed cure him, but uh, she said that as a reward, he must also marry her. Um, well, since she was a commoner, that is of a humble origin, the prince believed that he could not uh, do such a thing because of his noble status, but he desperately wanted to be cured, so he vowed to marry her after the healing. And uh, Fevronia cured Peter, however, once healed, he did not keep his promise, but instead sent her rich gifts. And uh, then soon the disease came back, and this time even worse, and uh, Peter's body was again covered with uh, scabs, and so humbled by the situation, he returned to uh, Fevronia, and uh, Fevronia cured him once again, and uh, this time Peter kept his promise and married her, and um, once he got to know her closer, uh, he recognized her as the wisest and the most pious and the best of women. And so their marriage was marked by profound, deepest uh, love, which they nourished by God's grace for their whole lives. And um, uh, soon after Prince Paul died, uh, Peter and Fevronia came to reign in uh, Murom. But there it happened that the boyars, that is the, the noblemen, they were unhappy to have a peasant woman for princess, and they asked Fibronia to leave the city. But Peter himself disagreed to part with his spouse and preferred to leave the city together with her. So Peter and Fibronia left Murom together. And then afterwards, 
because the city no longer had a prince, a power struggle began among the boyars, leading to havoc in Murom. And finally, Peter and Fevronia were asked to return, and uh, so they returned, and they reigned uh, wisely and happily for many years. And um, at the end of their lives, when they became old, they both uh, became monks uh, in separate monasteries, but they asked the god to die the same day, and they asked to be buried in the same grave uh, in a special double coffin. Uh, but um, in fact, the, the Russian Orthodox tradition does not allow for a monk and a nun to be buried together. So when they died, uh, indeed the same day, uh, on July the 8th in uh, 1228, uh, their request was not satisfied at first, and uh, they were placed into separate coffins. Uh, but the next morning, they were miraculously found in the same coffin, and, and uh, they were separated again, but the miracle repeated, and they were found in the same coffin again. So uh, eventually, they remained in the common grave uh, forever, and uh, forever together on the icons and uh, uh, in the story, and so in the memory of people. So uh, this story represents uh, to us the medieval orthodox uh, ideal of relationship and um, many of the motives um, of found uh, in this tale, they come not only from uh, Russian folklore, but also can be found in the Byzantine and the Western European literature of the Middle Ages, uh, such as um, motives of a uh, prince's uh, victory over a snake or a dragon, his magical healing by a beautiful maiden, and the motive of a wise uh, woman outwitting lustful men and protecting their honor. Uh, these motives, they can be found uh, among others, for example, in uh, the legend of uh, Tristan and Isolde, and even in uh, Boccaccio's uh, Decameron. But... Um, the special feature that uh, the researchers of literature mention about this tale is the general leading role of the female spouse, Fevronia. And it is something that did not exist in the earlier works that uh, influenced it. And uh, in the tale, we uh, encounter the scenes where Fevronia is challenged and uh, tried, and uh, every time she becomes a winner. Uh, for example, talking in uh, riddles with a Peter's young messenger, then competing with Peter himself in wisdom as he's trying her, suggesting to weave a cloth in one night, and she replied with a request to make in one night a loom for women out of um, for women out of a log that was uh, impossible, and. Uh, she wins uh, then uh, the argument with a uh, nobleman, defeating the appraise of the material things as she defends uh, spiritual uh, values. Or uh, in another scene when they are in a boat leaving Murom, and there is another married male character who tries to seduce her, she suggests him to drink water from one side of the boat, then from another side, then asking, uh, she asks if uh, the water tastes differently and receives the answer, no, that it tastes the same. And then she uses it uh, as an argument to prove that nature in all women is the same, so cheating uh, on uh, the wife is, is meaningless. And um, uh, there are other uh, scenes um, like that, but overall she, she does not only save her future husband, who initially rejected her, but wins his uh, eternal love and admiration, also help, helping him to rule the land for many years with uh, the highest virtue. And uh, it's due to her that the love uh, overcame the physical world and uh, revealed the miracle in the end when they are separated, that bodies were mysteriously united again, so that considering all together, they eventually were canonized by the church as saints to represent the ideal of a Christian relationship. And um, nowadays, uh, uh, as the day of St. Peter and St. Fevronia is established officially as the day of uh, family love and fidelity, it is often uh, criticized uh, by the liberal thinkers, uh, thinkers as an uh, ideological instrument uh, used to support the existing, uh, existing system of power. And uh, the particular points uh, criticized uh, is that uh, 
the marriage is in the story initially happened not for love, but because the girl uh, allured the man, forcing him to marry her. And so it shows a very bad example of behavior. And also uh, they point out that uh, the dominating concept of the freedom um, of the celebration is uh, family, uh, while love uh, comes second. So it supports not the personal freedom of uh, love or to love whoever you like, but the love that is restricted by conventions of the marriage. And due to it, it enslaves the person to social convents and oral that the medieval values and codes of behavior are inadequate to the contemporary society and can now work out. So the artificial installment by the governmental structures is hypocrisy, concealing the real state of uh, affairs and uh, so and so on. And um, um, well, uh, of course, uh, no doubt that uh, the tradition of uh, praising St. Peter and St. Fibronia represents the conservative mindset. Uh, uh, yet, um, I must mention that uh, it's not the content of this tradition that does not endure the critique, but uh, it's the profane way it is promoted in media. Uh, this is what I believe. And um, I would agree that... Uh, Secularization of this orthodox uh, tradition was perhaps not the best decision because uh, together with the paradigm of uh, relationship, it represents the totality of the Christian uh, belief. And um, the original tale of uh, Peter and Fibronia is um, actually a very complicated and uh, highly artistic work of uh, religious literature. And uh, it is full of profound symbols, uh, sacred numbers, used in uh, Christian mysticism and um, full of references to the Holy Scripture, so that um, being uh, deprived of all these poetic elements, the tale indeed uh, becomes an impoverished ersatz of the values represented by it. And uh, the tale itself, uh, so saturated with symbolic images, it can be interpreted on many levels. Uh, um, it may mean that fidelity here means not only fidelity of the spouses uh, of a couple, but it may mean the fidelity of the soul to the church and the fidelity of church to the laws of the kingdom of heaven. And um, also love that binds the spouses in the story is not the erotic love that is uh, considered essential for uh, the spouses in the contemporary society, but it's the spiritual Christian love. It's a uh, caritas. Uh, and I was talking about this distinction in uh, one of my previous uh, episodes uh, about uh, Apostle Paul. And um, in another way, this story can also be interpreted as a story about the journey of the soul that is deceased with a sin, and then uh, in a sacred marriage with the spirit, it purifies itself and deserves eternal life. Um, and um, so there are the connotations which, if they are absent from the reading of the story. They deprive it of its real content, and uh, this way lead to uh, misinterpretation. And um, another thing that I want to mention is that uh, other than all, all that, uh, besides all that, perhaps uh, the tale of uh, Peter and the Fibroni of Murum is not only an artful elaboration of uh, local oral folklore influenced by pre-existing literary motives, but also a distant echo of the real love story and a very famous one and historically witness a love story that happened in Byzantium, in Constantinople in the 6th century. And uh, it is the story of love of Emperor Justinian and his wife Theodora. Here here they are. And um, Theodora, she was not only of a very humble origin, but uh, in her early years, she was also a public woman, a dancer, an actress, and uh, a prostitute. But um, despite her past and her ill fame, and even despite the law that barred anyone of senatorial rank from marrying actresses, Justinian married her. And uh, he managed uh, to pass the new law, allowing such women and even their illegal children to marry the noblemen. And uh, later, when uh, Justinian succeeded to the throne in uh, 527, two years after the marriage, uh, Theodora was crowned and became empress of the Eastern Roman Empire. And um, 
she shared in the plans and the political strategies of Justinian and participated in state councils. And um, Justinian once called her his partner in my deliberations. So she proved herself as faithful, courageous and influential empress who, according to the historian Procopius, saved uh, the throne for Justinian during the riot, speaking wisely at uh, a meeting of the government council. And uh, this way they ruled together for many years. And uh, after their death, uh, Theodora and Justinian became saints in uh, the Eastern Orthodox Church and in the Oriental Orthodox Church. So for uh, the conclusion, uh, comparing the story of Justinian and Theodora of uh, Constantinople and that of uh, Peter and Fevronia of Murom, we may suppose that uh, the story of Justinian and Theodora initially inspired a number of uh, legends that traveled uh, in time and space and the culture to become one of uh, the sources for the Russian hierographical story. And um, that it is due to people's prudence that with the time it eliminated the details of the humble origin of the woman in the story, turning her from actress to the pious and modest maiden, and this way praising even more her wisdom and her virtue. But uh, however, in the most simple way, in the simplest way, um, and if we ignore the ideological uh, connotations, if we just appreciate these stories for uh, what they are, they, they both, the story of Justinian and Theodora and the story of Peter and Fibronia of Murom, they can be seen as stories of healing and uh, salvation by the power of love that overcomes uh, social inequality, difficulties of human path, and eventually defeats uh, death. So thanks for being with us today. Love each other and stay faithful to your values. And um, Saint, happy St. Peter and St. Fibronia Day.